yes. I mean, certainly, you know, North Korea is attempting to put it put in uh, military spy satellites in the atmosphere. They want to be able to know what the U.S. and its allies are doing in the region. They also want to be able to target, improve their targeting capability. And those spy satellites are critical to be able to be being able to do that. Um, it was a big failure. Um, it didn't, you know, basically it, it crashed before it even got anywhere close to the atmosphere. But um, space is hard, and no uh, failed launch is really a failure because it gives a huge amount of data for them to approve upon. And in fact, North Korea has come out and said they're going to try again very soon. And I have no doubt they that's not the case because, you know, they've tested over 200 missiles just since 2022 alone. They're really determined to do this, and they're going to use that data from the failed test to improve things. Yeah, so to keep watching. All right, let's talk Belarus and this transfer of tactical nuclear weapons from Russia. How much of a concern is this now that they will have these weapons stationed there? Well, strategically, it makes very little difference at all. Those nuclear weapons could be launched from Soviet, uh, from Russian territory. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if they're stationed in Russia or Belarus. This is really a, a political statement. It's meant to um, upset the West. You know, you know, we have a fear of nuclear war, and this is basically nuclear saber rattling. But there is one thing that uh, people typically don't think about. It is that there is a big risk here, and that is the risk of accidents. Anytime you move nuclear weapons, and if they're going to be stored in Belarus, where you know the storage facility is apparently just being built, it's not even finished. You're going to have uh, Belarus soldiers, um, you know, looking after them. Apparently, you know, the Russians have said that well, we've trained them. You know, there is a risk for accidents with nuclear weapons. Even in the United States, an American B-52 just in 2007 flew across the United States with nuclear weapons. And no, the crew didn't even know. I mean, accidents happen. And, you know, that for me is the, a bigger concern than the weapons being stationed in Belarus and therefore will have, uh, you know, a nuclear launch. Yeah, so it's more of a statement because, and to your point, I mean, with the, the pressures on Russia given their, their war in Ukraine, um, you would not think necessarily they had the resources to, to, to give much attention to the, the, these weapons in Belarus. Um, how even more bizarre really, I guess, is, is the fact that uh, the Russian President Lukashenko, the Belarusian President Lukashenko said any other nation that joins this grouping would have access to nuclear weapons. That's, is that true? I mean, how could he offer that? Yeah, it, it's quite bizarre and it's really irresponsible. You know, we have the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty where countries, it's the, it's the most comprehensive security treaty in the world where countries agree not to acquire nuclear weapons. Um, Non-nuclear weapon states agree they won't acquire them. And here he is basically thumbing his nose at that norm, which has really been important to stopping the spread of nuclear weapons. Um, and he, he has no authority to say that. I mean, I think he said afterward, like, oh, that was just me talking. But, you know, it was a way to say, look, um, you know, if you come up on our side, well, the Russians might be willing to transfer some nukes to you as well. What's really interesting is the um, president of Kazakhstan afterward said, oh, well, that was a nice joke. And we're not interested. We abide by the NPT, which was meant to be, of course, a you know, a, a poke in the side of the Belarusian president. Yeah, which is good to see, though, that he had that clap back. You know, I think a little disturbing, too, this week was the Kremlin uh, in an interview suggesting that with the West supplying such vast quantities of arms to Ukraine to help them defend themselves, it could lead to more serious firepower. You know, yes. these tactical weapons, these nuclear tactical weapons could be a very dangerous um, piece of a puzzle if Russia feels a little desperate, do you not think? Yes, absolutely. You know, people say, look, Putin is not crazy. He's not going to start a nuclear war. But look, we were saying, you know, who would have guessed that Putin would have launched a full scale invasion of Ukraine, that, you know, the Russians would have been attacking nuclear power plants, um, that Russia would be transferring tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus, that he would be making nuclear threats. I mean, countries for a very long time have not made explicit nuclear threats. And Putin has done it multiple times. 
So look, I don't want to alarm people unnecessarily. I think the risk is low, but there is a risk that Putin could launch a nuclear weapon, especially, for example, into the Black Sea, to say, look, I'm serious, you know, to basically do really strong nuclear saber rattling. And that's that's a real problem, not just because of the, the uh, conflict in Ukraine, but it also lowers the threshold for other states to make nuclear threats. For example, Kim Jong-un. Yeah, indeed. And how damaging could a tactical weapon like this be in a conflict um, like the war in Ukraine? Oh, I mean, if they were, if it was targeted at population, even though a tactical nuclear weapon is, is smaller than a strategic one, it still can kill, you know, many, many people, you know, a million people, depending on, you know, where it, you know, is it a, is it a ground blast? Or is it an air blast? Is it targeted like in the middle of the day? You know, there's a lot of variables, but, you know, certainly a lot of people could be killed and uh, would utterly destroy, you know, anywhere, um, you know, where where the blast took place. So, uh, you know, we tend to think tactical is smaller. Maybe it won't be as dangerous. Well, it's not as bad as a strategic nuclear weapon, but it's still quite bad. Yeah. Really good to have you on, as always, Maria. Thanks for your time. Thank you.